Hello Alti fans and welcome back for Alti video tip number four, solar attic fan installation. A friend of mine here in Hudson, Massachusetts recently purchased one of the solar gable fans from us and asked for help installing it. Seemed like a great opportunity to shoot some photos and video for a new video tip. Here's what I learned. Here's the view from up in the attic space at the top of the folding stairs. Her house is almost ideal for an attic fan, one story with a wide open unfinished attic space. No turns, no obstructions, just a straight shot with gable vents at either end. One challenge I faced was the presence of this silvered air duct attached to the gable vent that I wanted to use. The ducting carried exhaust air from the bathroom ceiling about 20 feet away. I needed to get that out of the way to install the fan housing, so I decided to reroute it to the nearest soffit vent less than 10 feet away on the north wall. Since I couldn't easily access the soffit from inside, I cut the ducting to length and tied it down in a couple of places, and I left it to my friend to get a handyman in later to complete the ducting. Did I mention that we picked a hot summer day to do this installation? With the New England humidity, it was like a sauna. I recommend doing this work at night or in the spring before it gets hot upstairs. These solar attic fan kits come complete in a single box. Here you can see the fan and housing in the box. I'd already removed the solar module in its own box and set it aside. The fan is pre-installed in the housing to blow air out of the attic. That action creates a low pressure zone which draws cool air into the attic through soffit vents or the opposite gable vent. With the bathroom vent ducting out of the way, the next step is checking the fit of the gable fan housing. The housing should meet the end wall framing so that the airstream from the fan will be directed out the vent hole without any air leakage. I think the fan housings were designed to work in a variety of situations from 16 to 24 inch stud centers. In this case, the meeting was not perfect, so I had some extra work to do. The fan housing wasn't quite tall enough to span the space between cross members. And even with the fan housing centered between the studs, it was a bit too wide, which you can see because of the light leak coming through the circular opening of the housing. The goal is to create a good meeting surface so you can hang the fan using the pre-drilled screw holes located around the perimeter and to make an air seal against the wood using the pre-installed weather stripping. So using some spare 2x4 lumber, I blocked in the lower edge, which wasn't a problem because the lowest vent slat was already closed off, and then I added blocks on either side. They didn't have to be load bearing because the top and bottom edges of the fan housing could now be secured to cross members. Here's how it looked with the blocking in place, making a good meeting surface all the way round. The only minor problem was that the boards I used on the sides were too short, so that the weather stripping in the corners on the housing wouldn't contact the wood. I had to lift and re-stick the weather stripping in the corners to make little jogs so that I had a complete seal. Next, I hung the housing in place with a single screw just to do a final check on the fit. I pushed open a small hole in the screen to pass the electric cable through. From there, it would go up to the solar module on the rooftop. Unfortunately, I didn't plan ahead carefully. To reach the PV module on the rooftop, I'd assumed I would need to use the long 20-foot cable that's attached to the fan housing. But as it turned out, the shorter cable attached to the PV module itself was just long enough to reach indoors. So I ended up mounting the fan to the gable wall twice. Not a disaster, but a reminder that it pays to plan ahead. Here's the situation later with the PV module cable coming through the screen. All the supplied cables are terminated in spade clips with weather-resistant plastic covers. The cable just barely made it into the attic, but I preferred having the clip connections indoors rather than outdoors. Once you've dealt with the electrical cabling and you're satisfied with your framing, remove the protective strip from the sticky surface of the weather stripping and position the housing against the wood. There are wood screws supplied with the kit. Screw in the housing on all sides for a good seal against the wood framing. There's another cable pre-installed on the fan housing. This cable has a spade clip connection that can be interrupted for installation of the optional thermal switch. The thermal switch can be used as a fan control. It's essentially a preset thermostat, turning the fan on above about 80 degrees Fahrenheit and off below about 70 degrees. Some homeowners I've spoken with chose not to buy the switch, preferring year-round attic ventilation, which they said would prevent wintertime moisture problems like mold growth. I recommend breaking the circuit at this clip while you connect the PV module on the roof. It's like a handy off switch. The photovoltaic module kit includes instructions, the module itself, and a bag of mounting screws. The first step is to attach the mounting brackets to the module. The angled metal brackets have pre-drilled holes for joining the module to the brackets and the brackets to the rooftop. There are also holes in the module frame which line up with the bracket holes. 
Attach the brackets so that the module will face upward into sunlight and will be slightly raised off the roof surface. Here's the solar module installed on the roof. I don't have video of the installation process, but suffice to say that you should only go up on your roof if you feel comfortable doing so, not to mention with making penetrations through the roofing. The mounting kit included a full caulking tube of roofing grade silicone sealant, which I used generously in the pilot holes for the screws, on the screw shafts, where the bracket singles, and also on the tops of the screw heads. The screws provided aren't very long, but they're long enough to go through the shingles into the roof deck, so better safe than sorry. The power cable attached to the PV module is outdoor rated. I routed the cable over the edge of the roof, anchored it to the flashing, and sent it in through the gable vent as I mentioned earlier. Be aware of power lines and other cabling in the area. Not only can they be dangerous, they can also shade your solar module. Back inside the attic, I closed the circuit by rejoining the spade clips I'd pulled apart earlier, and the fan started up. Don't make live connections on larger systems where there are higher voltage and current values. Results could be lethal. Solar attic fans use only 10 or 20 watt modules, so lethal current is unlikely. Still, the best practice is to cover the module first, make the final electrical connection, then remove the cover. This fan should now draw in fresh air from the soffits and the opposite gable vent, reducing the household cooling load. That's it for this Alti video tip. To learn more about this and many other renewable energy products, visit our website at altistore.com. At Alti, we're making renewable doable.